Top of the morning to you from Aurora, Colorado. And welcome to my craft room tour um, brought to you by Brugan. His face is cuter than mine, so his is the only face you'll see on this video. I'm just gonna pan around my craft room and you can see it's tiny, tiny, tiny. You know, um, the builders nowadays, well, back when this was built in 2000, built the bedroom so tiny you could barely fit a twin bed and a dresser in then. And that is what my craft room is made of. So let's start from behind the door. I haven't maximized the storage yet, but as you can see, I have some gift wrap rolls on here. And by the way, as I go through this craft room, I'll be talking about some storage solutions that have worked and some that haven't. Um, I have wasted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on storage solutions. So that's what I'll be talking about as we go through. Now this storage solution, and as you can see, I tried to maximize vertical storage. I actually like, this is, um, just the typical recollections washi tape holder that you could get at Michael's. But I want to talk about this cabinet here that's holding my Stampin' Up! stamps in the DVD size case. This cabinet is made by, I want to say Closet Made. It's a, called something else under the Target brand. So you can get it at Target or you can get it off of eBay, which is where I got it for $22. And it sits on top of my other Target brand, what, what is really closet made, closet organizer. I really like Stampin' Storage solutions, but their Stampin' Up! shelves were 60 bucks a piece and could not hold as much as this. And Stampin' Storage, as much as I've begged them, does not sell white painted wood. So I'm very happy with this cabinet storage and below it of course um, I keep my close to my heart stamps and some photopolymer stamps that are short enough to go in this organizer the ones that aren't I put in some empty DVD holders and you can see I have all my old wood mount stamps and I debated unmounting them all but I just don't care that much <laughs> The caveat, if you're considering buying this organizer, is that it will not hold your 12 by 12 uh, supplies. So do not buy this thinking that it's going to hold your scrap of papers. The next organizer you'll see is my Ikea Expedit, and they call it something else now. Um, it's a eight cubicle bookshelf, as you can see from underneath there's four more cubicles. And then I bought the desk, um, adapter as well. I bought this right when Ikea opened in the Denver area. Um, when we swing to my other wall and we talk about the, used to be Jet Max cubes and it was something else and now it's Recollections cubes sold by Michael. Michaels, <laughs> not Michael personally. Um, these, these, cube, these cubes are really the only storage solution I had in my area and had Ikea been open when I bought these, I certainly would have gone for um, at least an Ikea base with these uh, Recollections cubes on top. But back to my um, Expedit, as you can see, um, it holds Creative Memories albums perfectly. Um, I know Stampin' Storage sells inserts that hold anything from ink pads to 12 by 12 paper. So this really is a great size if you have an Ikea in your area. On the wall, from OrganizeMore.com, I bought this ribbon organizer, and I was kind of perturbed when it came because the dividers are foam core, and I was kind of perturbed about that. But actually, I like this. It's light enough to hang on the wall. As you can see, <laughs> I did not hang it level. I don't think I'm capable of hanging anything level, but um, it's worked out very well for me. This I just got. This is a spice rack <laughs> that I got off of eBay for like $19. And I'm using it to hold my threads and my baker's twine. And I had a lot of just different ribbons and embellishments that I bought these um, 
antique kind of clothespins. People sell them for craft. They make little dolls out of them. But I like to wrap my embellishment around them and then you could tuck the end just right here. Oops, sorry you guys. Tuck it right here in the end. And I like it. It works pretty well for me so far. Um, so I, I'm liking that. Now here's a organizer that is part of the Recollections line. I don't think they, I don't know if they sell them anymore, but I have buyer's remorse over because before I bought that ribbon organizer, I bought this thinking this rail inside could hold a ribbon. Well, first of all, I like to take my ribbon and go to my craft table. So I wouldn't have been happy with that. But if you notice how big that dowel is, most ribbons won't fit on that spool anyway. So you see a lot of people who have these, like Brandy at brandyscards.com. She just uses it for display as I do. Now, I have found that if my embellishments are in a drawer, I will never use them. So I was looking for a solution and I bought all sorts of different things, didn't like them. So I just took an old hanger, skirt hanger, that had multi-tiers and took one of the bars off and used where, what you'd clip your skirt to, to clip it onto the shelf. And then I had these clips from a different storage solution I bought that kept falling over. <laughs> and now I could just slide them and shop. Now, some of you with these glorious craft rooms and craft supplies and embellishments for days are going to laugh at me, but it works for me. have some down below, too. Um, as we go around the craft room and you look at some of my recollections, formerly Jet Max Cubes, you'll see that I've taken some of them apart, taken drawers out, and this was a drawer that went into one of my cubes. I took it out. I put foam feet on it that you just buy at any dime store. And now it won't scratch, I could slide it around. And this is where I hold my uh, books of paper. I don't have a very good standard place to put all my papers, so my papers are scattered about. And uh, something I don't like, but I think because of the size of my room, I'm going to have to live with. Anyone who has a big shot, once they get over the intimidation of how <laughs> Uh, confusing it is when you don't know what you're doing. Once you get it, you'll love it. And so I took a drawer from my recollections, um, one of my recollections storage solutions, because remember, if something's in a drawer, I don't remember it's there. And so I went everything out in the open and I didn't want much in drawers. And so I took this drawer and this is where I store my framelits, thinlets, embossing folders, my magnetic plate, my precision base plate, all of the Stampin' Up! accessories for the big shot that I have so far. One solution I'm working on is I've ordered the rings off of Amazon and I haven't gotten it yet. I better check on that. But I'm going to punch holes in the corners of all these. And these are examples, um, some samples of embossing plates and embossing folders I have. I don't know if you can see that. And that way, when I'm leafing through inspiration, instead of looking at the folders, I can actually look at an embossed piece of cardstock. And I think I'll enjoy that a little more when I'm looking for inspiration. Um, also, another felt feet solution from a drawer I'm not using, some 8x8, 6x6, and little Stampin' Up! books in there. I am forever buying cutting cutters, forever not happy with them. And so you'll see a guillotine cutter here. The first one I started with here, that's 20 some odd years old. A rotary cutter down there. <laughs> but really what I reach for the most is my Stampin' Up! cutter. And I'll show you that in a minute. This um, cubby has old catalogs, Stampin' Up! and Close to My Heart. A little old Creative Memories cutter, some Fiskars portable cutters, and boxes and boxes of photos that need to be put in a scrapbook. <laughs> oh, I, you know, we all have those. This table, oh gosh, I'm old. I should have meant over. It's from Ikea, and it has adjustable feet. So you can adjust this to counter height if you want to use it as a cutting table. I really like it. Um, 
If you guys don't have one of these in your craft space, I recommend you get one. I bought this when I was a Creative Memories demonstrator. So it's old, old, but you could buy them from Amazon and um, keeps you from ruining your cards by having a drink leave a ring on your craft table. You put your drink in here and it will hold a wine glass. And then for little tiny scraps, you just slide them off the table into the sack and I like that a lot. Of course, you gotta have the ot light. Yes, do not laugh at my owl curtains. Um, I know that they're baby, that's a baby fabric, but I like owls. So, <laughs> um, every craft table needs a box of baby wipes. I can't believe it took me 20 years to figure that out. Now this I just bought from, I wanna say Joanne's, could be Michael's, I can't remember. And I used to have one of those spinny things that um, everybody has and I hated it. Everybody loves theirs, I hate it. It was, the model I bought was way too deep and so pens would disappear and fall down there. You couldn't reach it. And so I bought this. I bought some foam core to, to make dividers. But it holds basically anything that I reach for the most, I put here. Scissors, tools, rulers, paint brushes, um, all my adhesives, all the sizes of the glue dots, my snails, dimensionals, fine tip glue pen, um those fancy edge scissors that everybody has and none of us use anymore. <laughs> so the ATG gun that I'm way too klutzy to use, but I still like it. And such. At the end of my table, because this craft room is so small um, and these cubes jut out, this really wasn't usable space for me to craft with. So I bought little storage solutions, kind of took them apart. Um, I have different pens, markers, um, markers from my Creative Memories days as well, uh, watercolor crayons, chalk, and my old box of Stampin' Up! markers because, you know, I had a the, these These markers in this box right here, I'm going to say they're 19 years old, 18 or 19, still going strong. Um, then I have some old... Um, combo punches from Creative Memories here uh, the circles and squares because you reach for those the most some music because you gotta have that um, that was my chair that wasn't me <laughs> I promise and um, here we are with post-it notes scrap paper we have repos sure repositionable tape this new glue dot dispenser I haven't used it yet how cool is that, you guys? Look at that. I'm gonna try it. My color coach for my Stampin' Up colors. My Stampin' Scrub pad and piercing mat, which you have to have, or it, it's nice to have for photopolymer stamping. And then I just bought this, and I haven't tried it, you guys. I can't wait to try it, the Misty. Google that. I, I can't wait to try that. Of course, my heat gun. But I want to, that is still my chair, I promise. <laughs> um, I did want to show you that on the side of these cubes, I have this little pegboard and it holds all my Cricut mats. So I thought I was a genius for that. I did buy this pegboard, oh gosh, five, six, seven years ago. And I don't use it as much as I thought I would. But um, notice the antique crimper. That's going to end up in an antique teak fair someday. Remember before the big shot that's all we had to give texture to our papers? <laughs> oh memories. Um, this is my Stampin' Storage ink organizer or my Stampin' Up! pads, re-inkers, and my newer markers. And can I just say that I adore this thing. It was worth every penny. It's pricey and it's worth it. The only criticism I have on these is it's really difficult oh sorry really difficult to grab the um, bottom shelf ones they should have dug a little hole nubbin so you could get in there and get it but otherwise I adore that let me go ahead and go along the top since we're already up here my um, 
sponge daubers and sponge case. We have, I just got this. This is the uh, Stampin' Storage punch holder. And I had some of these bigger old creative memory punches and I just simply removed one of the shelves to so it would accommodate that. This is a really flexible storage solution. I really like it. And you can see that I <laughs> have my Versamark and my pigment inks in there as well. Then I have my embossing powders and some odds and ends. But I do want to show you, I'm slowly starting, I just did this last week, bought these little Sistema uh, containers, bought 3M cable holders and these little spoons off of Simon Says Stamp so that, and I'm just gonna transition my powders into these containers and then some baskets that are just waiting to hold things. I bought this huge Cricut after I bought my first little Cricut because I was just convinced that my life was gonna center around cutting huge things and I've never used it ever. <laughs> oh, waste of money. Now, um, you'll notice that along the top of these, let me back up, these three Recollections cubes, there is a solid surface. I bought that at Home Depot. My brother, Chris, helped me. We had them cut it for us to size because I don't have any tools. And you can see we used the scrap they cut off of this. M I think it's MDF or something. It had the white surface on the top and bottom. We used the scrap mounted with 3M Velcro strips on top of just glass blocks to make this elevated shelf. And then we bought some, for the edge where they cut, we bought some stuff that you put on with an iron. And it gave, um, if somebody's butt would get out of the way. Bring and move, please. Up, up, up. Please move. If you could, okay, don't move. All right. <laughs> There's my um, embroidery hoops. If you can see here, it kind of extends the surface of this out beyond the cubes in the back so you get a little bit more storage and work surface up front. So that might be why I did it. I forgot why I did it. <laughs> when it comes to this wall, oh God, Bruggen. <laughs> My dog is trying to kill me. When it comes to this wall of cubes, <laughs> sorry, Bru. Um, I really like the vertical solutions along the top. I would have bought more of those cubes had I known that number one, as you can see, the drawers, the cubes with the drawers, do not um, close all the way. I was, uh, I'm way too OCD to uh, like that. And also, as I said before, I've discovered that if something's in a drawer, I will never use it. So um, that's my personal preference, my advice to you if you buy those cubes. So we have my Very Vanilla Whisper White bas and some basil paper, basically cardstock bases and stamping paper. Next to that is my watercolor paper. Some um, glimmer paper. I, it's not really glimmer because it doesn't have the glitter, like n real nice glitter like Stampin' Up! paper does. But silver, gold, and, and copper I ordered off of Amazon. And what's that? Oh, that's a silver foil paper I ordered off of Amazon. Some Stampin' Up! sets. Not upsets, but Stampin' Up! designer series paper sets are here and, and books. And I want to show you this new storage solution that I'm just now trying. This is, sorry y'all, a folder. And you can see at the top here, you can put a tab and name the designer series paper set and that way when you get those nice designer series paper packages from Stampin' Up! and you unwrap them your papers are still protected and you could store the scraps right along with the unused paper which I really like and here is the brand of the um, folder I, I am too broke to use this for every kind of paper and cardstock I have 
but they're really nice. Um, they're affordable if you just use them for your, your favorite designer series papers. Now, this is the cutter I reach for the most that I talked about. I love my Stampin' Up! cutter. It has an arm that goes out to 12 inches and has a scoring blade right on it, so I use this quite a bit. Other papers, my um, scoreboard, uh, my little uh, Creative Memories 8x8 or 6, yeah, 8x8 albums, Creative Memories scrapbook pages, and completed scrapbooks. Back to this side. I'm going to sit down. I love this cubicle. I wish I had gotten more of these because look how easy it is to just take and go. This drawer alone holds every clear block Stampin' Up! makes and a whole bunch of different sets and it all fits in one drawer. And then um, this folds down. I have different crap in there. Crap and stuff. More paper and idea books, inspiration. Under here, I have uh, different bins. I really like this one, this uh, cubicle too. I wish I had bought more of these. But I have sewing stuff. And most importantly, right by my work table, as you can see, I wanted within, arm, within arm's reach a bunch of um, scrap paper. Then I have some drawers, and I think the only drawer I'm going to show you, because that's fun stuff in it, is basically the drawer that I have all my glitters and flocking in. I have never used flocking. I was all ready to because I do a lot of dog stamping, as you can imagine. <laughs> and um, so, bold, bold new, bold new uh, areas to explore. And then I really like this cubicle too. It's you don't worry about the drawer fitting because it's ha the top half is a shelf and so you don't have the drawers that don't fit back right like the other cubes. I have my Xyron sticker makers, some note cards, but this is the drawer I'm most proud of y'all because it started with, um, it had, oh, there we are, it had uh, cubes and I just took out that row and the row behind, you can see where they, the other uh, dividers used to be. And they're perfect size to hold the A2 finished cards and envelopes. So, um, yeah, that only took me three years to figure out. Now I'm just tickled with myself. <laughs> Come on with your bad self. Um, my distressing supplies, some extra punches. I like this cubicle too. Brooklyn, if you move, we can get the better ankle, honey. Okay, we won't. This um, comes in handy. It has my FlipPal mobile scanner that lays flat and can scan directly from scrapbooks. Nowadays, you could get an app to do that, but um, back when I bought that, you couldn't. Uh, my label maker, a really antique stamp and positioner, some old vinyl and um, some sewing supplies. I do want to talk to you about Brugan. <laughs> Not Brugan. <laughs> Um, and then my close to my heart mat, I love this thing. It's got a little bit of a foam back, so it has some give. So I think it'd be valuable when you're doing photopolymer stamping. It's got the grid and it's got a washable surface, so you can uh, adhesive comes right off. I love that thing. They still sell them. I think they're eleven dollars. Um, Stampin' Up does not sell this anymore. Nesting trays for glitter, embossing powder, and really the Glitter and powder sticks to the plastic so horribly. I don't use these anymore because it wastes so much product. I just use, um, some people use coffee filters. I, I prefer basically a folded up piece of notebook paper. And then of course, here's my personal Cricut. If you could get around St. Bernard, but long enough. Um, and that's what I go to the most. So I just lift it out of there. This used to have drawers in it um, and this was one of the shelves that I removed the drawers and um, I'm using that for other things and of course I have my light table and then all of my Cricut supplies are under here and here is an unused drawer but you can see 
how the inside of that other drawer looked before I took the divider out. So I can always expand if I need more A2 card storage. Just take, take this out. And there we go. Now, last... Sorry. <laughs> I'm old. Last, I want to show you that I have so much trouble and have struggled for years with my solution to store my 12 by 12 paper, 8.5 by 11 paper. I have struggled with this. I bought, here let me turn on this, I have this clip on light that I bought just for this purpose because it's in the closet. And then I also bring my standing lamp over, so let me do that. I bought this drawer, it used to go into one of my Recollection slash Jetmax cubes, but even without paper in it, just with folders, the drawer was so heavy it couldn't slide in and out easily, and unpleasant surprise, I discovered that if you put tabs on the folders, it's too tall to go back in. So that cubicle that I bought was absolutely useless. So I just had an old file cabinet, had the drawer standing on its own, and I put all my old Creative Memories paper in there. You know, Creative Memories used to have 10 by 12 size. It was this weird size. Um, but I have 12 by 12, 8 and a half by 11 in here, just miscellaneous brands of paper. This storage solution uses the same folders, this one does, that come from Recollections. You can get them super cheap on Michael's uh, website when they go on sale. Like, I don't know, six or two dollars a piece, or I, I don't know, it's super cheap. And um, I built this, and I have a video, and um, got a lot of nasty comments on that video on from YouTube because YouTube isn't always kind. But I built this holder from just your basic cubes that you make, you know, bookshelves for, like when you're in college. And I used the 12 by 12 folders in this cubicle stand and all I do is maybe two three times a year I take a tea light candle and I slide it to wax the rails so that they slide easily and this works very nicely and as you can see this is in my closet because I am paranoid about sun but and well let's be truthful that it's in my closet because there's no room for it anywhere else but um I will tell you that even if it was out in a craft room and you had a problem with sunlight and paper fading, you can see where the edges of the papers are so easily tucked in that it really protects it from the light. And so I have only Stampin' Up! on this side because when I want to, uh, when I watch videos on YouTube and they recommend certain colors, I want to go straight to it and know exactly what it is. And so I have... Um, eight and a half by 11 and 12 by 12 papers stored together in these folders. One last tip that I didn't talk about when I was on the side of the room before. These um, cart, hi baby. These, oh yes. These carts I bought probably 20 years ago in Kansas. <laughs> and um, we brew. Hang on a minute, y'all. I'm so sorry. Move, buddy. There. I like it because I, when I'm crafting here at my table, I wheel this out, and I like to put my Stampin' Scrub on here and maybe a baby wipe, and this is where I, this is my stamp cleaning station. So I have the, the wetness away from all of my paper projects. And another thing that I like about this cart is I turn this cart into a dedicated scraps cart. And so any cardstock scraps I have, like they're organized by color, white, neutral, brown, and black, red, pink, and purple, blues, greens, yellows, and orange, and then miscellaneous um, scrapbooking paper, printed paper down here. In this other cart, I have stickers, Stuff that when I 
stamp something if it's really hard to stamp I'll stamp extra and leave them for later so I don't have to suffer again <laughs> card kits like paper pumpkin that I haven't made what's that oh stencils and then cutting blades um, and things there because I didn't talk about it but under my craft table is a whole basket of the old creative memory creative memories cutting systems and I have two binders full of stickers from when scrapbooking stickers were so popular I just probably thousands of dollars worth of stickers in there I'm just such a sucker <laughs> I bought them all so that is my craft room tour um, some things that have worked for me some things that didn't um, I think the overall for me the advice I would give myself if I could go back in time is that drawers do not work well for me. I like to see my stuff out. So, Bruggen, Bruggen, can you say goodbye? Goodbye from Colorado. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a fabulous day.